Welcome to Literary AF Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Winnipeg's number two <laughs> most popular <laughs> book-related podcast. So we can't confirm or deny that, because we don't know how many listeners Time to Read has. Well, I can tell you we're at least top five. <laughs> <laughs> Book-related Winnipeg-based podcasts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Southern Winnipeg-based <laughs> podcast. Uh I'm on a new mic today, so hopefully it sounds better. Let's see, we'll see. If we have audio issues, uh, I'm going to straight up murder somebody. <laughs> um, oh, anyway, welcome to uh, Literary AF. My yep. name is Sheldon. I'm Danny. And we're here today to talk about books. Yeah. Um, uh, how's it going, Danny? It's going all right. How, how about you, Sheldon? Oh, I'm good. Uh, I just felt like I needed something, <laughs> some kind of... Uh, talking at the beginning before i just launch right into a book sure today we're talking about wuthering heights yes by emily bronte yes um a book i read when i was like 20 ish Mm -hmm. and then couldn't remember anything about so i decided to read it again and i'm very happy (laughs) i'm quite happy i read it again you are happy you read it again yeah it's really good okay uh spoiler alert everyone it's good (laughs) I think how this book is like 200 years old now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so, around the... Uh, I think the spoiler ban can be lifted on 200-year-old books. Well, I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, according to the front of my book, this book was published in 2006. So, oh, uh, yeah. It's not that old. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's see here. My book has a fun little chronology of the Bronte sisters' lives. Ooh. Um, There's three of them, right? Emily, Charlotte, and Ooh, Anne? Can you guess the other one? Anne? Let me just see. There is... There's a couple of them. Maria, Elizabeth, oh. Oh. Charlotte, and Emily. Oh. Uh, Maria, I don't think, wrote anything. Yeah, I only ever knew about three of them, and I couldn't remember most of their names. So. Um, Emily wrote Wuthering Heights. Okay. Uh, Charlotte wrote Jane Eyre. Right. Which I think I'm going to talk about in two weeks. Okay. And then uh, the last one, Elizabeth, I think just wrote, she wrote another book, but I've never read it or I can't remember what it even is. So 1847 is when this one was written. Okay. So that's like. Or published, I guess. 180 years. Not quite 200, but it's close. So so we're going to avoid spoilers then the entire time. (laughs) Yeah. It's too Um, soon. All right. So let's get into it, shall we? Yep. Um, this book starts with uh, a dude named Mr. Lockwood, who he rents a house or like a manor or something uh, at this place called Thrush Cross Grange. Um, That's a name. Yeah, it's very, uh, well, it's very like Jane Austen-y era. And right. they're all like living out in the country. Right. Um, Thrush, <laughs> the Grange, I'm going to call it the Grange. The Grange. Is a... Uh, part of on the same manor land as another house an ancient manor called wuthering heights oh uh his landlord heathcliff um is a rich dude who lives in wuthering heights uh heathcliff is a jerk and he's super rude to the dude (laughs) um along with heathcliff is a there's a girl named kathy who won't talk to lockwood or she's really rude to lockwood There's a boy named Hareton who's also really rude to Lockwood. I think he doesn't speak to Lockwood. And then uh, a servant named Joseph who speaks in a horrible accent, which, like, I can't understand at all. I just skip over Joseph paragraphs. It's it's read out, like, wrote out phonetically on the page. Yeah, and it's like, all I, not, yacht. (laughs) It's like a lot of (laughs) A-U-G-H's and a lot of A-I stuff. Like, I can't find a Joseph paragraph just randomly flipping through the book but (laughs) yeah it's very very hard to read anything he says right um luckily you can just kind of gather from his tone that he's just being a jerk all the time (laughs) yeah you don't need to actually read through them good good uh so so uh what's his name lockwood's trying to make friends with these guys um he gets turned away the first day he comes back the second day and um it's very cold out and it's like the middle of a storm and it's middle of winter mm-hmm. and he's like oh i have to stay here for the night and then um they're like no 
get out. And then he's like, come on, it's so freezing. You have to let me stay. I can't make it home. Uh, oh, and he's like, send me with one of your servants. And Heathcliff's like, no, I can't spare a single servant. And then he's like, why? You're not doing anything. You're just staying at home. And he's like, no, you have to leave. And uh, Lockwood refuses. And then he stays the night in one of the upstairs bedrooms. Mm. And um, he thinks he sees a ghost, I believe. Okay. I think he sees a ghostly woman. And uh, he calls for help. And then Heathcliff finds out that Lockwood was sleeping in this bedroom. And he freaks out because no one's allowed in that room. Um, he sends Lockwood away in the middle of the night. Lockwood gets home, but he's really sick because he was wandering out in the woods all night. Um, and it's cold and stormy. Uh, and then while he's sick, he gets nursed by a housekeeper named Nellie Dean. And then he starts to ask Nellie questions about the family. And Nellie is, becomes our narrator for the most of the story. Almost all the story. Okay. Um, so Nellie was a servant at Wuthering Heights. Okay. Uh, there is for a guy named Mr. Earnshaw. Uh, Mr. Earnshaw had two kids. There was Catherine and there was uh, Hindley, I think was the older brother's name. Um, and Mr. Earnshaw finds this little homeless kid on one of his like business trips. Uh, and he brings the kid home and the kid's name is Heathcliff. Right. You might recognize that name from earlier. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wink. Um, <laughs> I winked at the microphone and then realized no one at home would get that. Uh Anyway, Hinley hates Heathcliff because uh, Hinley's like the older son and he sees that his dad's like basically giving all his attention to this new son. And um, there's a lot of like class issues of like Heathcliff was like a homeless kid. Uh, They hint that he's like a gypsy or that his like skin is darker than the rest of them. Um, So they hate him like for like racial reasons. They think they call him like black as the devil and stuff like that. Right. Uh, I don't think actually black. I think they mean it in like the old school, like dark features kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So very rude. Doesn't like him. Uh, But Heathcliff and Catherine become very close. And they're like, they call them like little devils, like roaming the moors together, like getting in mischief. They're just like running around outside all day. They don't want to go to church. They don't want to learn. Right. They just want to like cause trouble and be together. Um, they grow very close. Uh, Hinley, oh, Mr. Earnshaw dies. Okay. And then Hinley takes over the estate and Hinley starts treating Heathcliff like crap and basically turns him into a stable boy. Right. And, uh, then Hinley gets married to this lady and the lady's like not accustomed to like country living or whatever. And she doesn't like it out at the estate and she's kind of rude to everyone as well. Um. And then she's also mean to Heathcliff, I think. Right. And, uh, yeah, that's... So Heathcliff doesn't have it easy as a kid. Uh, And then she dies, the wife dies. And and then Hinley starts to become like a hardcore alcoholic. Um, Before she dies, though, she did have a son named Hareton. And he comes in to play later. Oh, yeah. He was at the... He was in the opening. Okay. Um... Meanwhile, Catherine and uh, Heathcliff are really close. They, like, sneak over to the neighbor's place at Thrushcross Grange. And uh, they see they're having, like, a dance. And the two of them are, like, throwing rocks at the people or and stuff. They're, like, okay. just little, like, devil kids. Okay. And then uh, they get caught and they try to escape. But then the, the dog at Thrushcross bites Catherine's leg. And so she, like, she gets hurt. She can't leave. They nurse her back to health. And then, like, she gets her first taste of, like, society. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Catherine ends up, like, kind of the... I think the mother from the house wants Catherine to come over. And also, they have two kids. There's uh, Edgar, Edgar Linton, and Isabella Linton. Okay. And Edgar falls for Catherine right away. And so, they... Catherine keeps going over there for lessons... Uh, Heathcliff is being treated like a stable boy and he's like getting kind of resentful because Catherine's being educated and having fun without him essentially. Mm -hmm. And then they start to be, they start to get kind of unhappy. They, uh, Edgar proposes to Catherine at one point or else he just like says he wants to marry her or something. Cause they're, I think they're still teens at this point. Okay. And then... (laughs) 
there's this weird conversation they have, and I want to find it because I underlined a passage. It's the, it's actually the quote that's in Twilight. Oh, okay. So I might have read it on the Twilight episode. <laughs> yeah. So this is a, this is the quote actually that made me want to read Wuthering Heights, even though it's totally, the rest of the book does not quite match the <laughs> romance of this quote. All right, let's hear um, it. So this is Catherine talking about uh, Heathcliff. It said, If all else perished and he remained, I should still continue to be. And if all else remained and he were annihilated, the universe would turn to a mighty stranger. I would not seem a part of it. Um, so yes. basically, like, uh, Heathcliff is her whole world. Yes. But she's still thinking of marrying Linton. She says, My love for Linton is like the foliage in the woods. Time will change it. I'm well aware. Um <laughs> My love for Heathcliff is more like the eternal rocks beneath, a source, f- wait, a source of little visible delight, but necessary. <laughs> okay. Um, and she's just explaining that her and Heathcliff are basically the same person, like they're the same soul in two different bodies. Yeah. Um, but she's still like she's entertaining Edgar's notion, and yeah, she knows he has money, and she knows he's like handsome, and she thinks that like if she were like married to Edgar, she'd be kind of happy. Yeah. And during this part, she like talks when she's list, talking about how much she likes Edgar. Um, Heathcliff overhears that part. Is she talking out loud? She's talking out loud. She's talking to Nellie the servant. Oh, okay. Okay. And so Heathcliff overhears it, and he decides he's going to leave. He just like takes off from the Wuthering Heights. <laughs> okay. And it jumps a few years in the future. Uh, I think like three years. Catherine gets married to Edgar. Um, Hinley is even more of a useless drunk. Okay. And uh, Heathcliff returns. And he comes back and he's got money now. Oh. He like... It's not... Nellie's not sure how he made the money, but she thinks maybe he went to America and made his fortune over there somehow. In three years time? Yeah. Somebody said he was... Or they either think he was a soldier for a while and got paid like like a soldier salary and yeah. came back with money. Yeah. Or else that he discovered like a gold mine or like some kind of okay, like way to make money in the new world. Just a mysterious fortune. Yeah. Just it's like a Count of Monte Cristo fortune. Like he just like he went off. He got some money. He's back. Okay. And uh, <laughs> the first thing Heathcliff does is he buys up all the debts that Hindley has. Mm-hmm. So. The drunk and cruel brother who would always beat up Heathcliff yeah. is now, like, basically owned by Heathcliff. <laughs> okay. And Heathcliff now doesn't... I don't know if he technically owns Wuthering Heights, but he, for all intents and purposes, he does. Right. But he wants Hinley to stay with him, <laughs> and Hinley hates it. Okay. And he's like... Yeah. Uh, Hinley carries around a pistol, <laughs> and is just, like, ready to shoot him. <laughs> Heathcliff, but he's like too much of a coward and Heathcliff's like, just try it. Just like come for me one night. I'd love to see it. <laughs> All right, so good. Heathcliff is good, a little good. provocative. Yeah. Um meanwhile, Catherine and Edgar Catherine is I don't know the right word for it. Well I do, but it's a word I shouldn't say. It starts with a B. Um, mm. Catherine is just like a very spiteful person she's very she gets mad over nothing right um she's very like randomly cruel and then like acts like she's the victim after right uh so Catherine is like and edgar things aren't going great between them but it's going okay until heathcliff comes back right and then all of a sudden she's like she wants to see heathcliff uh edgar's like no you can't see him blah 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 blah. um isabel the sister or Isabella, she starts to fall in love with Heathcliff because now he's like rich and like kind of suave. Yeah. Um, and he's like kind of the bad boy, like because nobody is like, because Edgar's like, oh, you can't talk to him. He's such a cruel and ooh dark and mysterious man. <laughs> and then it's like all of a sudden, all the girls want to talk to him. But yeah, so uh, that's that's what's going on with them. Mm-hmm. Um, at some point, Catherine. Oh my gosh, I can't remember the exact order of things that happen, but they have a big fight with Edgar because Edgar says that Catherine can't see Heathcliff and Heathcliff comes over anyway and Catherine still invites him up. <laughs> um, Isabella thinks that it's about her or else Heathcliff like says something to her. Uh, anyway, they run off and get married. To, Isabella and Heathcliff run off and get married. Oh, 
Okay. And All right. Catherine chases them out into the woods or something, <laughs> or she goes out looking for them yeah. and gets sick. Okay. Going out into the woods and getting sick is a common theme in this book. I I've mean, just realized. I've, I've noticed in a lot of like uh, Regency era books that just going outside in general usually results in sprained ankles and yeah. getting sick and generally needing to be rescued by some guy on a horseback. It's so funny because it's like, if you're reading, like, the working class would have been outside all the time back then. <laughs> yes. But it's like, these are like the no- nobility class. And they're like, <laughs> if they go outside for an hour, they're all of a sudden, they're on the brink of death. Yeah, they're going to get sick. They're going to break their leg. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Isabella returns after a few days and okay. is like, Nelly, you have to tell my brother um, to come rescue me like Heathcliff is evil. <laughs> And so Heathcliff, the the scamp that he is, <laughs> scamp. as they're leaving, he decides he's going to hang Isabella's dog. What? Yeah. Okay. Heathcliff goes from being like an understandable but like like dark kind of anti-hero guy yeah. to like straight up supervillain. Why? <laughs> because he wanted her to have nothing to turn back what? to. What? Or something. What is this book? Basically, Heathcliff really enjoys torturing people. It's really good. Um, <laughs> this is so not at all what I was expecting. <laughs> they save the dog, I think, but okay. Heathcliff and Isabella, um, Isabella doesn't, like, oh, he said that was her last warning. Before we left the Grange, I hung the dog on the tree so she knew what kind of treatment she'd be in for. What? And she went with me anyway. What? So Heathcliff is like, he's just out to get the Lintons. That's his whole thing. Because he's he's mad that Edgar married Catherine. He wants revenge. And so he's out to get the Lindens. Why is this regarded as a romance? Um, it's it's weird. I want to talk about that. Okay, we'll get to that. Uh, Continue with <laughs> Wow. So he is, tries oh. to hang the dog. Yeah. He um, gets back to the house and he won't have anything to do with Isabella. He just like... And the people in the house are mean to her. Like, Hinley's like a mean drunk. Hareton is like this like weird like neglected boy who barely knows how to speak and is like throwing rocks and apparently like pretty much the only words he knows how to say is like swear words so he's just running around the house cussing at her (laughs) uh joseph and the other housekeepers won't do anything to help out isabella and she's a spoiled brat she's like a huge priss right and she cannot like live for herself so she's like (laughs) doesn't know what to do because there's nobody there to make her meals there's nobody there to make a bed for her right like She's losing it. And Nellie goes over and tries to talk some sense into Heathcliff and is like, this girl is not like you. She needs someone to take care of her. <laughs> and then Heathcliff is like, basically like, who cares? I only married her to get back at Edgar. Right. And uh, so that goes on for a bit before finally Isabella just makes her escape. Um, oh, wait. Somewhere in there, Catherine's sickness... Um, first Catherine has a baby because I guess she was pregnant and then she dies when she has the baby oh I think it's Edgar nurses Wait. her back from her sickness um, Catherine? He, yeah Catherine like the one Heathcliff's in love with this happens halfway through the book I was really surprised by it Okay. Um, the one that Heathcliff is madly in love with she gets very sick uh, he goes and visits her a few times she manages to live just until she gives birth to a baby and then she dies Uh Edgar names the child Kathy as, like, a way to remember Catherine. Right. So it's, like, um, so there's a lot of, like, double names going on in this book. Okay. And then Isabella, around the time that she dies, uh, around the time Catherine dies, Isabella leaves. Uh, and just, like, takes off and, like, hides somewhere where uh, Heathcliff will never find her. Okay. And then, um, so Edgar taking care of his daughter Kathy, and he keeps Kathy, like, away from the world. He doesn't want her ever going out to the grain. She doesn't want... Or no, they live at the Grange. He doesn't want her going out to the Heights. Yeah. Um, doesn't want Heathcliff finding out that he has a daughter or that Catherine had a daughter. Right. Um, he's trying to keep Kathy safe. And like Kathy, I think she's described as looking like Catherine. Of course. Like the, being the spitting image of Catherine. But of with course. Edgar's eyes because Edgar had blue eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, so he's trying to keep her safe. And then they get a letter from Isabella. And Isabella's dying because she's sick too because everyone's <laughs> sick. And then, <laughs> oh, that's not the last of people getting sick and dying in this book. Um, but she had a son. She was pregnant when she left Heathcliff. Okay. 
So she has a son. His name is Linton Heathcliff. Named him Linton after her brother who Heathcliff hated. Right. Um, and he needs, she wants her brother to take care of this child. Well, so he goes out and he picks up the child and comes back and he goes out for the funeral and stuff. Um, Linton Heathcliff, and this is, I think him and Kathy are both around like 11 or 12 at this point. Mm-hmm. They're, they're like young, like teens or preteens. And uh, Linton sucks. He is the worst. He's like this little, like, snot-nosed, like, brat. He can't handle anything. He's mad that the carriage ride was uncomfortable. He can't, <laughs> like, I can't eat that kind of food. I can't sit in this kind of bench. He's like, oh, he's so detestable. Right. Um, but Heathcliff finds out that he had a son that he never knew about. And so... Like, the day that Edgar gets back, Heathcliff is over there to retrieve his son. Um, so he takes his son back, and then at some point... And Kathy's, like, she wanted to visit him because Kathy had been kept totally secluded this whole time. Mm-hmm. So she finally met somebody else her own age, and she's, like, instantly latched onto him. Right. And then he's taken away after a day. So then Kathy kind of, like, devises this plan to, like, um, write him letters, I think... And then at some point she goes out. Oh, she wants to go wandering through the hills because she's never been out allowed to go to the woods or whatever near their place. And she wants to go wandering and she devises a plan. She tricks Nellie, the narrator, into taking her. And then she ends up going to Wuthering Heights. And so she meets Linton and she can't believe her cousin's so close. She meets Hareton and she just hates him, treats him like crap. <laughs> um, everyone in this novel is kind of terrible. Right. Just like... People always say that Heathcliff and Catherine were terrible, but it's actually every character in the book is <laughs> cruel and bad. Okay. Um, so she meets them. She There's like a bit of back and forth. Eventually Heathcliff sees her and is like starts devising a new plan to get back at Edgar. Um, he's trying to make them... He's trying to make Kathy and his son fall in love. Like that's his plan. Right. And so he's like facilitating them writing letters to each other he's um trying to arrange visits he's trying to do all this stuff uh meanwhile linton's health like rapidly goes downhill because he's sick and because he's like a little brat and he can't handle the country air right. and he can't handle the food and he can't handle he and plus everyone beats him up because it's <laughs> the heights where everyone's terrible of course um Hindley has also died by this point okay i can't remember when that happens but he's dead and uh so now Heathcliff is taking care of Hareton as well. And uh, yeah, so he, the there's a whole second half of this book is like with the kids mm-hmm. and like eventually Linton and Kathy kind of like get together, but she doesn't want to leave Edgar or like her father because her father gets sick. Of course. But um, Heathcliff is like, no, you have to like, because he knows that Linton is dying too and he wants them to get married before uh edgar can die right basically so that he can get a whole like control of the will kind of thing right so he does his little scheming he like forces them to get married he holds like nelly and uh kathy hostage for a while um until basically until it's all settled and then he gets control of all the money he gets control of both houses he's finally gotten his revenge on the lintons um and he lives like and then it kind of goes to like the current, the start of the story with Lockwood. Right. It goes to that like era. And it's like the kids are there. They're miserable. Other than Linton, Linton dies. Um, the, <laughs> like Kathy and Hareton are both miserable. Heathcliff is like also miserable, but he's like, he's like, thinks he's won. Yeah. And he, that like, he's kind of feels triumphant about that. And he's right. like kind of cocky. And his plan is to, he was going to tear down thrush cross grange as like revenge against the lintons but then after like after everything happened he was just kind of like didn't have the heart to do that and he was just like whatever (laughs) um my enemies are all dead i don't care right and then something happens at the very end of the book which is like kind of magical because the whole so it's like the whole book has this dark kind of oppressive atmosphere towards the end right and then all of a sudden kathy starts like trying to become friends with Hareton and she's like joking around with him and she tries to teach him how to read and tries to educate him, tries to teach him how to like behave more like a gentleman. And, uh, he, he like loves it and he's starting to like take attention to her. He's like, 
they said that he was like a naturally good child who was just so mistreated that he was like a horrible little monster. Right. And now that he's been treated nice, he like is coming out of his shell and he's like behaving like a proper gentleman and like um he starts laughing and that was like forbidden at Wuthering Heights. Right. And because it reminded uh, Heathcliff of Catherine. Okay. So all of a sudden Heathcliff doesn't know what to do because these kids are happy and he's like <laughs> won't have it in his house. Right. And he goes through this whole mental breakdown. He thinks he sees Catherine everywhere. He can't handle the kids being happy. He doesn't. He wants to beat up Kathy but then he like sees Catherine in her and stuff and he won't touch her. He like loses it and then he dies like oh. super quick. Right. And then it's like the second he dies all of a sudden everything is better like. Everyone at the mansion is happy again. Like, <laughs> Hareton, who is, like, Hinley's son, like, all of a sudden he's, like, ready to, like, inherit the estate and be, like, the proper lord of the house. Mm-hmm. Joseph starts acting, like, happy because the the house is returned to the proper family and all this stuff. And it's, like, a weirdly, like, optimistic end for such a, like, negative For book. a book where everybody died because they got sick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yes. Yeah, so, oh, my gosh. That was so long. Uh, anyway. <laughs> It's, I really enjoy it. It's, like, there is some, like, a lot of people consider this, like, a love story, and, like, mm-hmm. uh, I've heard, like, dark love story or, like, tragic love story a yeah. lot. Um, I think, I mean, I combine to the tragedy angle, because, like, Heathcliff is so evil, but the first half of this book is, like, him just being, like, super poorly treated. Yeah. So it's, like, he's evil, but it's understandable. At least yeah. at the beginning. And, like, I mean, you're mad because he hung a dog. I'm mad because he hung a dog, yes. I mean, he also imprisoned a woman and forced yeah, he her to get also, married against her will. Yeah, he also uh, and then imprisoned stole a lady. He uh, manipulated a family. He slaps a lot of people. He, slaps, too. <laughs> he slaps people. He's going to beat up Kathy. And then the only reason he doesn't is because he's crazy. But then it's like... So the first half of the so that's the second half of the book. Yeah. The first half of the book is like, hey, here's a child who is homeless, who is beaten by his adopted family, who right. is like kicked under the cur like, you know, kicked to the side, who's sure. forced to work as a stable boy. Sure. Um it's almost like I keep thinking of Count of Monte Cristo where it's like, here's this guy who's very poorly treated, he disappears for a while to make some money and then comes back for revenge. Yeah. But Count of Monte Cristo was more like it's more like him growing out of that, oh, whereas what? Heathcliff is him like sinking deeper into like darkness. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a lot of like good quotes of like loving stuff uh, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like that passage I read, I really like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've underlined a lot and I can't seem to find any of it right now. <laughs> oh, I drew a star. Did you find something? Uh, he's not a rough diamond, a pearl containing oyster. He's a fierce, pitiless, wolfish man. I think that's Isabella describing uh, Heathcliff. Heathcliff. All yeah. Right. See, I've I've heard this described as a love story, and nothing that you have just said sounds like a love story. I've well, heard like Kathy and Heathcliff are star-crossed lovers, and yeah. this and that, and it just that does not sound at all like a love story. Well, it's because they oh, they are deeply in love for the first half of the book while Catherine's alive. Yes. And, like, she marries someone else almost out of spite. She marries someone else, he marries someone else, and then she dies. <laughs> but the whole time, the whole time between those chapters, they're, like, trying to get together to talk to each other, trying to, like, like, they're, they are in love the whole time. Sure. And it's, like... It's their, like, kind of love that makes things very chaotic. Right. For everyone around them. Um, let's see. I think this is Heathcliff talking to Nellie. Okay. He says, Well, I think I shall be justified in going to extremes. I wish you had sincerity enough to tell me whether Catherine would suffer greatly from his loss. Oh, he wants to kill Edgar. <laughs> but he doesn't want to if that would make Catherine sad. Right. The fear that she would restrains me. And there you see the distinction between our feelings. Had he been in my place and I in his, though I hated him with a hatred that turned my life to gall, I would never have raised a hand against him. Um, I never would have banished him from her society as long as she desired his. The moment her regard ceased, I would have torn his heart out and drank his blood. But till then, if you don't believe me, you don't know me. Till then, I would have died by inches before I touched a single hair of his head. 
So he like he like thinks he's good, but he's horrible. Yeah. Just delusional crazy man. Yeah, but he, I don't know. I I don't like Heath ugh. I kind of like Heathcliff as a character because he's a very interesting character. Sure. I don't, like, I wouldn't ever want to hang out with Heathcliff. <laughs> um, but no, he's a very interesting character. And him and Catherine, like, I their love is, like, that toxic, like, too passionate, like, yeah, the kind that, like, destroys people love. And I yeah. find that, like, a very interesting thing to read about. Um, sure. I, I can get that. I just, I've heard this mentioned in like the same vein as Pride and Prejudice, and yeah, and I don't think these are on the same kind of level. Like it's classic lit, sure, yeah, but like people would be, oh, you know, a love story like Pride and Prejudice or Wuthering Heights, and that just doesn't feel like it would be on the same level at all. Honestly, I feel like people say that without like having really... read the book. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, that could be what happened. And. It's probably like, or they they know the basic story, or they've seen one of the movies. Because if yeah. you watch, I watched the 1939 movie with Laurence Olivier the other day. Okay. And um, that one only, it only has the first half of the book in it. Where it's like, Heathcliff and Catherine are in love. They can't be together. She marries someone else. Right. He like marries Isabella to like get revenge, but he still loves Catherine. And then Catherine dies and he doesn't know what to do. Okay. And it's like... I can understand why if you had that version of the story in your head, why you'd be like, oh, this is definitely a love story that doesn't work out. Sure. But when it goes to the second generation <laughs> and it goes to Heathcliff, like, torturing people and torturing yeah. animals. When he's gone full-on like, crazy guy on a mountaintop. Yeah. Yeah. Because all... So before this, before today, what I knew about this book was there are moors. Yep. And Heathcliff is, like, a brooding hero. Uh. Yeah, and, uh, partially. And Kathy is like... He's brooding for sure. Yeah. And Kathy is just like involved somewhere. That's Those are the two characters I knew. And I knew there were Moors involved. And I yeah. knew Heathcliff was brooding. That's all. I was not expecting <laughs> what you just said at all. No. there. It's like... I feel like if... Like, because Twilight wanted to be Wuthering Heights in some ways. Yes. Like, by having Ed, Edward be kind of like... The bad boy and <laughs> Bella like being caught between them. Sure. Or whatever. Sure. But it didn't have the guts to follow through and make no. Edward actually bad. And there, yeah, one of the books did mention Wuthering Heights a lot. Was it Eclipse? I, I think, think it, it might have been Eclipse. It might have been the first one. Was it the first one? No, I think it was later on because there was a lot of Wuthering Heights references. I think it was oh, in the third book. Wait. um, It's definitely, it's either second or third because... She talks about with when her and uh, Edward split up. Well, the second book talks about Romeo and Juliet a lot. And then the third book talks about Wuthering Heights a lot. I don't remember where the passage is that I like read before. Mm -hmm. But I remember that's like one of the things she says like when she's thinking about the two of them being split up. Yeah, she's filling out university applications and her old copy of Wuthering Heights is on the table. Oh. So it's the third book. It's embarrassing uh, <laughs> how well you know Twilight books. <laughs> this has been a this has been a year for books for me. That's for sure. Yeah. But yes, Ooh. Stephanie Meyer tried to be Wuthering Heights, but did not have the balls to kill a dog. Yeah. Or torture people. <laughs> well, he could have killed a werewolf. <laughs> not in the same. Could have killed a werewolf, I guess. Yeah. Wait, who? I'm trying to. I found another quote that I underlined. Okay. Uh, I think it's Isabella says. Okay. Uh, I would rather be condemned to perpetual dwelling in the infernal region <laughs> than even for one night abide beneath the roof of Wuthering Heights again. Perfect. I just kind of, <laughs> I, I like that passage. Sure, yeah. Um, no, I think the ending is surprisingly sweet with Hareton and Kathy finally getting along. Sure. And like, because the whole book is like, I'd say the book is less about love and more about like a generational sort of... Um, like general, like almost like a generational curse where it's was, like yeah, I was gonna say like a feud, uh, a grudge. Like uh, you, like Heathcliff was treated so poorly, yeah, and then it's like he turns into an abusive person because he was abused, right? And then like, um, Catherine was like this kind of 
crazy abusive person and it hurt all the people around her too like right. edgar and like kathy and isabella like are all really hurt because of Catherine, right or like Catherine's legacy and so like these two people like almost wrecked everything for themselves but also for their kids for, yeah, yeah and then it's like the ending is like the kids like almost fixing things and like getting back to normal and it's mm-hmm. kind of cool to see um but yeah we're going a little over time okay that's okay um moral of the story don't go outside you'll get sick and die <laughs> yeah <laughs> i there, this book is complex and i like that it's mm-hmm. uh it's kind of dark and i like that but it's not like too depressing i mean most like there's bad stuff that happens in it but for yeah. the most part it's like you know like kathy is like enjoying life and she's like trying to see her father and like that kind of stuff yeah um and like i think bronte has like a really good like she makes the world really come to life right it's sort of like i would say it's almost like a mix between pride and prejudice and like a gothic story sure okay it's like there is the love elements there is the like courtly stuff yeah but then there is like this dark scary mansion and there's like ghost women and there's like a man losing his mind and torturing people. Actually, this book is, now that I think about it, it's like so heavily influenced by gothic stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I can see I can see that. Yeah. Uh, yes, okay, so we're going over time. <laughs> we should end it. Sure. Um, Danny, where can people find our stuff? They can find our stuff on Spotify, YouTube, uh, uh, iTunes, and Podbean, Literary AF. Uh, you can find our Gmail, literaryafpod at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at literaryafpod. And I also just made an Instagram for sharing pictures of books and things, literaryafpod. Don't follow the Instagram, You, you should guys. follow the Instagram. Do not follow the Instagram. <laughs> uh, you can follow me at Twitter at, at Sheldoman. Mm-hmm. I've decided to finally give my Twitter oh, on the Oh, giving away the, the secrets. Yeah, yeah. So find me there. I've started tweeting about books occasionally. Perfect. Good. Um, you can also find me hanging out at your local arcade, eating nachos <laughs> off the floor. Um, please do not talk to me. This is my special alone time. Uh, in Next week, what are we reading, Danny? Uh, next week, I am going to be talking about two books. Uh, one is called Band Sinister by K.J. Charles. And the other one is called Galaxies and Oceans by N.R. Walker. So if you want to participate in the next week's discussion, <laughs> uh, we won't hear you because it's a podcast. No, but we can pretend. But you can uh, read those books and uh, enjoy the conversation a little more. Yeah. Uh, in two weeks, I'm going to be talking about another Bronte sister book. I'm going to talk about Jane Eyre mm-hmm. or Jane Eyre. I, it's, I think it's Jane Eyre. I'm going to do that every time. I'm like, Jane Eyre? <laughs> J- Jane Eyre? Jane Eyre? Uh, I've always heard Jane Eyre. So that's in two weeks. Yep. And in the meantime, I uh, hope you guys have a fantastic... Um, uh, that's a strong word. Hope you guys have a pretty good day. An all right day. <laughs> Bye. Uh, mediocre week. <laughs> See ya.